So today we're going to try and do some laser diffraction, um, hopefully with a view ultimately to creating the, um, the famous uh, cross-shaped uh, diffraction pattern from the helix that Watson and Crick observed when they were doing their X-ray diffraction of um, DNA. First mistake of the film, it wasn't of course Crick and Watson who did the X-ray diffraction work on DNA, it was... Rosalind Franklin! Uh, so first I need to go and get the laser, obviously. Um, I thought I had one in here, but it uh, turns out I don't. No idea when this might have last have been used. Ow. So there's definitely something going on there. We're going to pull the wire into the beam. Okay, so this looks a bit more convincingly like we've got something interesting happening. Pretty definitely a diffraction pattern going on there. We've got dark, some nice dark fringes and light fringes, a bit of a mess in the middle, but spreading all the way over here is definitely something going on. So, um, so what's happening is that the, um, the laser beam is effectively being cut into two by the wire. The, the wire is um, narrower than the beam, so the beam is passing around both sides. Um, uh, um, the, uh, you can see all the nice little, the, the, the nice pattern of uh, uh, the ways add up and you get a bright um, they, uh, so, so anyway, they get, they get to the screen and, and, and because they've both travelled um, not, not the same amount of, <laughs> not, not the same distance. <laughs> anyway. Ow. Ooh. I don't know what you just did, but it was good, yeah. Okay, so um, don't mind this little light exclusion apparatus we've just had to set up here. Uh, can't really bl uh, block out the light in the prep room at the moment, so um, we're having to improvise. But uh, you can see so much more structure now, which obviously which, because of the uh, slightly crazy assortment of wires that we've set up, but you've got diffraction going off all over the place. And if you really look in, um, really look into the structure of the pattern, you can see there's sort of this really fine structure throughout the two-dimensional field. But you can imagine that if we went through the whole process backwards, you could work out from this pattern where all those wires are, because if you, if you move any one of those wires, then the diffraction pattern is going to change. So, so you could, if, you, if, you could do, if you could do the math, then you could work out exactly where all those wires are from this pattern. Imagine then doing that not with laser light, but with x-rays, instead not with wires, but with atoms. And that, that is the basis of X-ray crystallography. Another day, another diffraction target. I'm going to remove the glass as carefully as I can. Oh, that will probably do. So I think we've got, well, we've got a diffraction pattern there. It's a very, it's a very sort of flat cross with the axes of the cross very close together. But um, I think that's sort of what you'd expect from a, from a core like this, because it's a, very, it's a very tight coil. If you remember the diffraction pattern we got from the, from the vertical wire, it was sort of spread out into this horizontal pattern. Um, basically, we've got, we've got that happening from the coil from two different, but not, not quite perfectly aligned sets of vertical wires. So we've got these sort of line on one side, on the near side of the coil, sort of all lined up together. And then on the far side of the coil, we've got the same thing, but shifted very slightly as the coil sort of winds itself around. Um, so I think, I think this is what I would have expected to happen. Um, and if we, using my surgical tweezers, if we just sort of tease the filament out a bit, hopefully as, the, as we extend the coil and we accentuate the difference between the, between the sort of front and back of the coil, we should see the cross open out a bit. Um, 
And yeah, yeah, it's kind of doing that. Um, probably only so far I can pull this before it breaks, but yeah, that's quite nice. So we've got this really lovely diffraction pattern just from our um, light bulb filament over there. And uh, this, um, this is very characteristic of, of the diffraction you get from a helix or a coil or something like that. And it's what Rosalind Franklin saw when she was doing her X-ray diffraction of DNA. And it really influenced Crick and Watson in determining the structure and, and finding this the famous double helix that is DNA. And we've reproduced something pretty similar here uh, with a light bulb and a, um, a laser pen. And it's, I think it's pretty good. I'm quite pleased with it.